Hello you, and welcome to TAC Talks. Uh, this is a place where I, Takai Honda, get to chat to actors about their lives, about acting, about the work they've done, anything really, because it's TAC Talks and there's no rules. And today I have an exceptional guest, uh, someone who's an absolute legend who I love working with, who I don't actually get to work with on scenes as much as I'd like. I hope to get to do that a lot more as we go on in the future. Uh, but please welcome Olivia Jokir. Yay! There she Hello. Is. Uh, how are you going? I'm going very well. How are you? I am good. I am good. Uh, enjoying. I'm really excited to be here talking to you. Um, did you film today? Uh, no, I had the day off today and yesterday, actually. What about yourself? Oh, well, some of us are over on the location side of the team because the actors have been split up into two teams. Uh, and there's only seven of us on the location side. So some of us are working much harder than the others because you guys have like 20 cast over there. And <laughs> like it's, it's, it's pretty brutal outside in the cold. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's freezing out there. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, yeah, it's it's been a fun time, been a fun time. Um, but prior to Neighbours starting back, how was your quarantine experience? Um, I actually really enjoyed my quarantine experience. I think we were, wor we were overworked, not overworked, I shouldn't say overworked. We were just so exhausted by the end of it because we were pumping through just in case we'd get shut down. Well, obviously we knew we were going to get shut down, so we were just pumping through as many episodes as possible. And I remember being with Ben Hall being like, I just want a late start. I just want a late start. I just want one sleep in. And then we went to the board. It was like 6 a.m. Olivia Junk here. And I was like, <laughs> no. And I like wanted to actually cry my eyes out. So those, I think we had four weeks off. They, they were quite nice. So yeah. I really enjoyed did you get into the whole, everyone seemed to start painting and be good at it for some reason. <laughs> did you start painting? Oh, I, I started painting. You did? And yeah, and it was pretty awful. Wait, do you have one on hand by any chance? Uh, I didn't do an actual, so I bought like really bad quality jeans and I painted over the jeans. That's cool. So, yeah, it started off cool <laughs> and then it just like, I get so bored and I was like, this takes forever. This is not it. And I tried to kind of like see every single talent that I could possibly gain. And I just don't, I don't, I don't have any other creativity. <laughs> it's just acting. That's all I can do. I tried guitar. I even bought a ukulele. Oh. I have, I spent a lot of time online shopping and like. It's worst things you can do. Yeah, exactly. Did you paint? I did not pay. I was spending my whole time doing these things, really. Like, oh, yeah. literally. <laughs> I spent so much time doing these. Um, no, well, I did you... Wait, I just said it. What, what is... I just forgot. I had a question. And I had a... Anyway, we'll move on because <laughs> that... I hate that. I always get these things where I'll, I'll think of something and then I just blank. So I even, I even have a little notepad to, like, write stuff on because I'm like, I'm going to forget. And then I didn't. So That's what i got to use. I didn't use it. What an idiot. Um... Yeah, well, let's let's dive in. What was what was you were brought up in Melbourne, right? Yeah, I was born. Uh, yeah, born in Melbourne. I've lived my whole life here. <laughs> you sound really dismayed by yet, that. I am yet to move somewhere else, but I'm looking forward to eventually doing that. Yeah, where where where's a dream location for you to live? To live, I'd say like London. I'd love to live in London. Um, but I just really want to travel at the moment and I don't want to necessarily live in the places that I want to travel, but obviously you can't do anything at the moment, yeah. but I really, really want to do Italy and those places, but I'm just waiting for the day now. Just waiting. I read a thing the other day saying how uh, the Australian dream has changed generationally from uh, the older generations to like now millennials who rather than it being a house and a backyard and that kind of stuff because we just can't afford it. It's now moved to this wanderlust thing where um, it's about traveling as much and gaining as much experience as we can. And we've now been slammed on both both fronts because we can't get the house and then we can't travel anymore. So <laughs> it's so true though. That is what the the dream is now. I think lots of people just want to travel and 
I mean, I love Melbourne. Like, I really am a creature of comfort to the point where it's like an internal issue for me because I really want to explore and like have all these adventures at the same time. I just love Melbourne so much. It, so yeah, it's that's it's, why two week travels suit me more. Like here, back, here, back, here, back. It. it, it uh, I also read another thing, <laughs> just to list a whole bunch of things that I've read. <laughs> really um, read. Was that the ideal amount of time to go on a holiday or a break was nine days, and anything beyond that, you don't actually get much of, of the beneficial effects of a holiday, uh, or you, like it doesn't keep increasing. So if you have more nine nine days, sorry, did I say week? I think I said week. Nine day breaks rather than yeah. one long break a year. It's you get more out of it, or you get more rest and recovery and that kind of stuff. Is that the nine days including the travel time though? It didn't go into that specific. So <laughs> let's say let's say no. So let's say nine days of being somewhere. But also, I mean, if you're traveling somewhere, it de- depends what type of travel you are. So if you're after relaxation from work, then nine days at a beach is one thing but if you're going to uh, around europe then you don't want to spend nine days just going yeah. to each place so no it would be that kind of travel becomes a different thing i guess but in terms of re- like recuperating then a nine day break is is ideal well i remember when i started my first year at neighbors and i was like oh my god like i have money and i can do things and i have freedom because i just turned 18 and um uh, my friends were in europe and i was like well i have to i have to go and I only had 10 days and I have never experienced more stress <laughs> and sickness from just going for 10 days. Cause we were going everywhere too though. Mm. So like, Oh my God, I had like ear infections and the whole, and I came back to work. My goodness. I was not well. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a no go ever again. I never, I've never done it since. Well, where have you travelled, like prior to Neighbours and also, I guess, if you did that as well? Prior to Neighbours, I went everywhere with my family. Mm. Um, also, I was underage as well, so that's normal. But I, uh, my family and I were – I was pretty lucky. I got to go into a different – like a lot of different places. Like I've been to Hawaii with my family and, you know, those kind of luxurious holiday beach-type places. And then when I started at Neighbours, I went – to I've been to I've actually traveled quite a bit I've been to Croatia I've been to Budapest I've been to New York and I've been to Sri Lanka and I've been to Thailand that's a pretty good list that's, that's so a far. great list so far yeah it's a really great great list um and did I see that you had done some training at like RADA and the Globe Theatre and stuff it was on your show oh stuff but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, not like, not like. I wouldn't say training. <laughs> Maybe that show cast is a bit <laughs> dra- dramatized a bit. So I did. Um, I went to London in year ten with my school for drama, so all the drama ge- geeks, which was me. Um, went and did some workshops over there, and was kind of like a school, school thing, learning thing. Yeah. Um, which was really good. It kind of made me. I. That's kind of what. Um, formed my love for London and where I want to live and where I'd want to work. So, yeah. yeah. I went to London in year 10 as well, but not for acting, for singing as a choir tour. Oh, really? Yeah. We went to uh, England, Wales, and uh, Venice, Italy, and where else did we go? Uh, Salzburg um, in Austria. Um, and we sang at the Langothlin. International Stedford in Wales, which was like the big comp that we went to do, which was yeah, a pretty yeah. cool experience. And then um, just sang in all the major like cathedrals and stuff as a choir. It was kind of like it, it, it during school when you're part of choir, it feels kind of lame. But actually looking back, it was like it was a pretty cool thing to go do. Uh, yeah, really cool. Did you love it though when you were there? Yeah. I mean, you know what? I never had hay fever until I went to London. And then I got hay fever. I was like, what's going on with my eyes? Horrendous. Why are they so itchy? And then I had oh. hay fever ever since. I have really bad hay fever. Like, Oh, that honestly, that's not even worth it. I don't think. <laughs> no. um, that is awful. It was, uh, I, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. But I, ever since I've had hay fever, um, which is weird. Um, but what was, uh, what was young schooling like for you? What subjects and stuff did you like doing? What were you drawn to? Were you always drawn to the drama, English sort of side of things? Yeah, and I hate to say that because it's so boring, but 
I actually was just, I was always, um, I was, my brain just never worked in maths ever. Like it just wasn't a thing that would work for me at all. And my, my dad's very um, maths, maths all the way. And it was just like, no, not going to happen. Um, so when I got to, I think I got to year 11, I dropped maths and I just, I, I got to do studio arts, media, drama, psychology and English. What's, and what's studio like, arts? Studio arts is like anything like, it can be um, fashion, photography. I'm, I could be wrong with that. But um, <laughs> painting. But I did photography. <laughs> so I only know what I did. I don't know what anyone else did. Um, yeah. So, like, I had a really good time, to be honest, because those are things just, I mean, they're not necessarily easy, but they're things that I just loved. And I, I miss that because I don't do that stuff now. Mm. And like we had a dark room and I would go out with my camera every weekend. It was just the best. I had the greatest time in school doing those subjects. Before that, I would say I was a bit like absent. <laughs> 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 to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but until when I got those subjects at the end of that, the last year, it was the best. I had the greatest time. Yeah. Well, I... And it was a nice transition. Like I didn't stop acting. Like I got to... Um, act throughout ho- my whole high school and then going to Neighbours was pretty pretty awesome for me. What was the first performance for you? Oh, my gosh. I was like, I used to dance. I can't dance now, so don't ask. No one should ever ask me to dance. But I used to be able to dance. Um, what sort of dance? And oh, I used to do tap, um, which is, like, so ridiculous. I can't actually see myself doing tap now. <laughs> tap, jazz, hip-hop. And I thought ballet was too like I thought I was too good for ballet, so I was like, <laughs> "That sounds very yashvi like." I know it does, doesn't it? It's so cringe. I hate that. I look like that is what I was like as a kid, and I used to always want to play soccer. Oh. But my first performance would have been tap. Yeah, right. What about for acting? For acting, my first performance was we did a school play every second year in primary school. It would have been one of those. Do you remember what it was? So, what did you do? Yeah, it was. <laughs> they used to write their own. How bizarre is that? It's because they got to pay for the rights, and they they're really expensive, so they write their oh, own. Oh yeah, it was called I believe I. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Don't know if that would be allowed anymore. Okay, but... yeah, good. Yep. Yeah, but that was what it was for. And my own, my I remember my first solo little performance was in year six, and I was Sally from Must. Sally. That's all I really remember. What, do, what, do you remember any lines from Mustang Sally? I had one line. You one line. What'd you say? I had one line, but I got to wear this really cool race outfit. Like it was like a racer's girl outfit and it got to zip all the way to the top and I just thought I was so cool. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I had to like tell off a boy for like thinking I was good looking or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they looked around the school and went, Who, who's good looking? And then would tell off a boy for thinking they're good looking. Olivia. Yeah, it. that was basically the my little line, my little. <laughs> so, yeah. That's cool. I, was there? When did you think that acting was the thing that you wanted to do? Oh, I used to watch um, Lizzie McGuire. Oh yeah. When I mix, that was. I used to watch it. And I used to be like, I just want to do what she does, and that's basically that. So I was pretty young. I was yeah six. And then how, who? who drove you in the right direction in terms of going this? Cause it's like, I think a lot of kids have that idea in their head when they're little, they look up at these people on the screens, go, I want to do that. But to get to the place of actually starting to walk along the path, who helped mm. you along that way? To be honest, my parents, my family aren't like, aren't very creative in, in that way. They don't think that way. And they've never ever um, had the desire to um, want acting or dancing or whatever it may be like my dad is in construction my mum's in marketing and so no one really did I just kind of kept going and kept it was a hobby for so long so it was basically a hobby until I was old enough to figure out what exactly I was doing if that makes sense yeah like I was like this is acting this is what I can do with it okay let's do it because I loved it so much and also, I got to high school and it was just a bit of an, it's an awkward phase, I think, being such, like, so keen on acting and stuff. 
and wanting to do drama, it's it's an awkward thing in high school because no one else really gets it unless you're in the drama class wanting the same thing as well. Yeah. And then there's a bit of a stigma to it as well. It's like, so it was kind of a hidden hobby for me. Because you were such a cool cat and you couldn't let it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I just tried so hard, to be honest. Um, And also, also they make you do these, like, if you, obviously, you would know, you go to drama class or whatever when when you're a kid and they make you do the most uncomfortable things like really uncomfortable with your classmates and stuff. And I was, I'm like, I'm secretly quite shy. So like this would, I would have to fake the confidence Mm. like no other and I would hate it. And I got to year 10 and I was like, I can't be a professional actor if I don't continue drama class, but I used to hate drama class. (laughs) So I was like, Oh my God, what am I going to do? It was a real dilemma in my head. So I made all my five friends every Saturday come to drama class with me. Oh, wow. That's, they're they're nice friends. Yeah, I know. I'm assuming that was the five that I saw at your 21st, given the speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still there. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. That's quite, that's a really, but that's also like a, a brave thing for you to do to ask them to come along as well. Yeah, it was, but I was like, I was like, that's awesome i really love that so you so you didn't really have a mentor guiding you through that you were just following your own like light in a way yeah that's that's really impressive yeah i think so yeah it was it was it was just something that i loved so much and i hated i really hated when people it's it's kind of embarrassing telling someone that you want to do something so like it's so un- it's so dreamable, you know what I mean? It's more of a dream rather than something that you'd actually achieve. It's harder so to quantify I just in kind of, ways. Yeah. And so I would say it, I, and people were like, what do you want to do when you're older? And I'd just be like, oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, i just try and try and try, and I just couldn't deal with not getting there eventually because I, I didn't know what else. I, that was the only thing for me. I didn't, I don't, I didn't, never had a plan B, never had anything else that I wanted to do. So I just followed that. I think two things. One thing is that for anyone, any, anyone out there who wants to be an actor and they feel like they're quite introverted and they're quite shy and they don't, uh, they're not that person who wants to stand up the front and do a jazz hands and stuff. Mm. Um, mm. Don't feel that that, like Liv is a perfect example that, don't feel that that's uh, will hold you back, or it means that you're you're not a good actor because that's not what acting's about. It's not about having to be right. that person um, because heaps of people on the planet aren't that person. Um, and quite often, like when I was working in casting or helping out with casting more than working really, um, when we would <laughs> audition little kids, you'd have those kids that were really confident and they were like they were like what you'd expect to see on like an American. Um, a game show or something, a game show, a competition show thing, and they're all really like proper and they know all their lines and they say them all very confidently. They know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah. Um, and quite often it was the kid who was quiet and came in. Sometimes they, they were a bit bratty and just didn't even know their lines, but uh, but who came in and just sort of was the person, you know? Uh, and so for those people at home, that could be you and that can be much more exciting. You don't have to be that showman so to speak the mm. front man or the front woman um to be an actor so so take solace in this conversation but yeah. what I want... and actually yeah. oh sorry to interrupt you but like i remember coming into work and you don't have a lot of people that are completely extroverted and like usually in note like from my own experience in drama there's the one or three people that are like the spotlight is on them you know what I mean? But I, and I could never really be okay with that. I was always so uncomfortable by that. But like at Neighbours, you don't really have that many people that are so extroverted. It's quite interesting, actually. Really, now, like at the moment, there's probably way more introverts and extroverts. On social yeah. media, everyone appears to be an extrovert because it's kind of a job in a way to put ourselves out there. We have to kind of be vulnerable with people, but, um, and tell people our stories all the time. Like it feels like we're, that's a demand of us. Um, but re- yeah, I, like I agree with you completely that on set, the majority of the cast at the moment, and it changes with who's on or whatever, but the majority oh, yeah, is is more introverted in a lot of ways. Um, but what 
if if that wasn't who you were, you weren't didn't like the spotlight because many people are attracted to acting because they like being in the spotlight. Um, yeah. What was it for you that made you love it? Um, I really loved. I would I would always. I really loved making people feel the emotions that I was conveying. And that sounds really like cringe a bit, but I think it's such a powerful thing. I really do. Like it's so powerful to make someone like cry or laugh or feel the emotions just by the way you are performing. I think it's pretty incredible. And I just used to love that so much. And I loved being the person in the audience so much. You love manipulating people. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what attracted you to act? It's funny that you were saying that. As, as you were saying that, I got an image in my mind um, doing a NIDA audition, which I never got into NIDA. Um, I was uh, close, but I never got in. And uh, <laughs> I remember doing, because you have to do monologues and whatever in part of your audition, and you do it in front of the other people who are auditioning. And they usually do, I think, like 10 to 15 or so in each audition. Or maybe double that, but then they split into two groups. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Uh, I remember doing this monologue and just seeing that I had them, like that they were engaged and they were with me performing whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And that to me, like there was a, there was such a magic in that, it was exactly how you were describing it then of being like, I'm... I have you. I'm, I'm making you feel something, you know, which... Uh, which 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 is a really special thing, and it's not. Yeah, there's yeah. no other. There's nowhere else you can really do that directly. I mean, people, more artists do other things, and people feel from their paintings and that kind of stuff. But as an actor, you can stand on a stage or whatever. I mean, doing it as in screen slightly different. But I mean, you have the crew and stuff there, but um, and the other actor. Uh, but there's where you can have a direct link with other human beings on mass, and not have to be yourself. That's another great thing mm. um, that's where the the shy person can thrive because you can put the mask on in a way not um, yeah. and affect people and tell them a story and, and transfer information communicate an idea that otherwise might not be communicatable communicable um oh yeah no i totally agree it's such a powerful it's really pretty cool to be honest <laughs> yeah that's and when did you think you could you were good at it I thought I was good at it when we had to do monologues in year 10. So you had to pick a monologue to do and then hang on one second. Do you need to know? I don't know when that took is. Um, yeah, we had to do monologues in year 10 and you had to, you had to, to pick whatever monologue you wanted. Mm. And I picked a really sad monologue. I think, no, not sad. It was from ha when Harry meets Sally. Yeah. When like, Harry met Sally. Yep. Yeah. When she was telling him about what she wanted in, a, in her boyfriend, because if we got married, um, she was like, if we got married, we wouldn't be able to fly to Paris whenever we wanted. And something about that. Anyway, I had the monologue. And I just remember being so, in, like, so captivated by the words and then portraying that in the thing. And my audience like really came up to me personally and told me that they really enjoyed it. And I remember being like, I'm actually good at this. I think I might continue. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, when did you start professionally auditioning? Was it, were you still in school when you started doing that? My mum didn't let me. <laughs> she... Just dob her in. <laughs> Just dob her in. She was going to hate that. But that she didn't. She actually didn't. She was like, no, you can't do... She didn't want me to get an agent. She didn't want me to. She basically only said, like, you can do classes. That's it. Because you need to finish school. And I think she was. She always knew that my drive for acting was larger than my drive for any type of schoolwork. Um, so that kind of, that, that really drove me crazy, to be honest. But I'm glad she did that. <laughs> um, but it did drive me absolutely up the wall especially when I turned 16 I was like I don't care I want to act so my dad felt so bad for me that he would secretly took me to one audition and it was for Nowhere Boys season I think it was one mm. I think it was one 
Yeah, and I didn't get it. And then my second audition was Neighbours. That's pretty crazy. And before I know. before we get to Neighbours, uh, do, you, do you, you have one sister? I have a brother and a sister. And my sister just came in the room just before. <laughs> I'll be one sort of. um, are they in the artistic realms at all or driven towards that? No. Did you ever make them do little performances with you ever or anything like that? I made them do dances with me all the time. Okay. Like all the time which is so embarrassing and I used to like make um I used to make my brother do dances with me constantly but he actually quite liked it he really liked to dance do you have a tiktok um, yes but I don't I only I only just stalk other people on tiktok well you should do a family dance thing now I actually should I think I, I did one last night but I didn't put it anywhere because I got too <laughs> That's not the point. <laughs> I know it's just for my own safekeeping, but maybe I'll put it. No, I love it. It's just me and my sister doing this stupid dance. No, no, I, I actually, I actually do think that that is the point more so than putting it out. There is a yeah, the point. Put it everywhere. Yeah. I think it's really nice just to do it for fun with each other, rather than let's see how many followers and likes we can get and whatever. There's actually one that we've tried to do with my brother, but it just failed because my brother's my brother's a lot younger than me. He's six years younger than me, but he's like huge. <laughs> and he in every way. He's like six foot. He's so oh, he's so strong. And there's one TikTok where the two on the side jump and then the one in the middle jump. Yeah. Have you yeah. seen that? Oh my gosh, that is so much harder than you think it is. <laughs> I couldn't we cannot get him down. We just cannot. <laughs> I saw a thing that was saying that everyone stop doing this. People are hurting themselves, <laughs> cracking their head open. I was like, your coccyx bone would Whoa. kill. Whoa. I've bruised that before too. I can't remember how, but I remember pain. it being bruised. And, oh, it was like it's like six months of pain, yeah. constant pain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so neighbors was your second audition, and that that was. Were you still in school then? I had. I had just graduated right and when i say just graduated i had literally like just graduated so how would you got where'd your agent did you have an agent at that point yeah so i had i i was i secretly got an agent right as well uh, what age and what, i got that agent when i was in year 10 so i would have been 15, 15, 15 yeah did you did you tell them that it was a secret did they did you not need permission no 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 so my dad my dad took me to meet this woman her name's katie um and katie um didn't know it was a secret but she was more theater beauty pageant that kind of thing so it, i wasn't interested in that anyway yeah. it was more just to have someone that can get me something here and there that i could get away with yeah so it was kind of perfect in that sense but she she got you the neighbors audition in the end yeah um and what was how how did you feel? Did you feel pretty confident walking into that, going, "Yeah, I know what I'm doing," and just gonna smash it? Or were you like, "I have no idea what I'm, what I'm doing," <laughs> just flying by the seat of your pants? To be honest, I actually didn't care. How bad that is. No, that's, that's a perfect way to walk in. That's why I got it in. though. That is why I got it. Well, that's yes. Because I was kind of. like, there is no way I am gonna get this, and I was on my way to schoolies, and I had to cancel my flight, and I was more angry about the fact that I had to cancel my flight. Was that for the Knowing first callback or the, the I, first audition or the callback? The first. Wow. That Well, that shows your commitment. Like, yeah. But I was so annoyed at myself because I was like, why am I doing this? I know that I'm not going to get this. The likelihood of me getting this is just ridiculous. And so because I didn't care is the reason I got it. I swear by it. Absolutely. I mean, I know so many actors who said, this is my last year. I'm, I'm going to give myself a year and just screw it. I'm going to do whatever. And then if something happens, it happens. But otherwise, at the end of this, like it's been too hard a slog and I'm going to go do yeah. chase some other dream. And then they just book like five things that year because they just walk into yeah. the room, the audition room with that attitude going, I don't care. You know, just, I'm going to give you this yeah. if you want it and have me. Otherwise I'm happy to leave kind of thing. And it's Cause when you're nervous, you can, you can, you push it on to everybody else. You can feel it. It's heavy in the room. <laughs> and there's, who was I talking to today is about there's, there's the nodders where, this again comes from working in casting. You see them come in, and the casting director will say, "I'll oh, try doing this," and they go, and they're so nervous, oh, and they're so got so much pressure. They, and then nothing goes in, and they do whatever they have to do exactly the same as what they just did. And the casting director goes, "Okay, thank you," and then they're out. Oh, but, and, it is nerve wracking, though. It is, no, it, it is such a nerve wracking experience. 
Absolutely. The worst bit is the waiting room because you're looking at everybody else and you're like, oh, God. Did you have a callback? Yeah, I had one callback. Was that at the um, the That was at the studio. Yeah. I remember it like, no, I remember that day so well. Thea was like, oh, I, I didn't know how to get in the door because I went down to the – so the, the, our studio is a bit strange, everybody who's listening. Um, you can go down to where the school tunnels are or you can go up and that's where the cafeteria is. And I go down to the school tunnels and I was like, the door's locked, why is it locked? And there's a big sign that says audience members only and I'm like, am I an audience member? I don't know what's going on. And I, so then I went up and I went through the cafeteria and I ended up in the cafeteria and I was like, what, am I? what is this world? And then Thea found me. She was like, just One, go sit over there. Wandering the and corridor. I watched a bit of neighbours just before my audition. And she asked me to sit on the couch in the corner just as lunch happened. So everyone was coming in for oh, lunch. And everyone... In there, right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I remember the first person I saw was Olympia. And she gave me a smile and a wave. And I was like, bye, bye, bye. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, it was just it was very awkward. I'm very awkward. And then I finally got to the room. And it was Nat, Jason. And do you know who I auditioned? So you have a person that you audition with. Yeah. Sometimes. And do you know who I kept street testing with? Ryan and Nick. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Can I just, no one, that is probably the most, like, scariest chemistry test you've ever, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, they're beautiful people, but, yeah. like, in terms of acting, like, I had Toadie and then I had Nick who plays my dad. Yeah. And Nick wears He's all He's quite an accomplished actor up until this point anyway. Yes, exactly. And I'm, oh, my gosh, it was... Intimidating. My, oh, my gosh. Is when it... when Ryan came in, that's the only character of my name is I knew. <laughs> and I was like, Shh. oh, God. So, so what was the actual audition like? Did did, did it go smoothly in your head? Uh, what was right? What, what were they like when you actually started talking to them? You know, once you got that initial... Um, Ryan audition. was so easy. Ryan, like, came like that. Because Ryan's very, um, he he didn't really care either. He he came in, he was like, yeah, cool, let's do this, whatever. So, and I think obviously Nick, for Nick it was his gig as well. He wanted his daughter to be casted well. So he was pretty serious. So he was kind of like testing me. And was he was he With, cast? He had already been yeah. cast. I was the last one to be cast. Right. And so when Nick came in, he already filmed a little bit as well. And I, I didn't really i didn't know if he had been on the show previously i didn't i didn't, didn't know anything but he definitely i think wanted yashvi to be yashvi really <laughs> and yeah. so so he tested he tested me and i was like oh this is my, this is nerve-wracking and By, like pushing afterwards... you hard like coming at you hard and yeah the like scene. he kind of he kind of gave me nothing before we said the lines mm. so i didn't like get comfortable or anything which is like a good thing in terms of whether I would break under pressure or not. And he kind of, cause he had to tell me off in the scene. And Nick is a very, very good actor and he's very good at what he does. So when he's telling me off, I'm like, Oh my gosh, it was pretty scary. And then afterwards I kind of just went with it anyway. Cause I was like, there's nothing to lose here. Like whatever. And then afterwards they kept asking me about my hair. And I knew that they thought I was too old for the role because I was 18 and Yashvi had to be 15. And they kept, and I had no makeup on, which is so funny because every single comment I get on Neighbours is, Yashvi's too young. Every single one. And all they were concerned about is me being too old for the role. Uh, yeah. That is so funny. They were going to give me bangs. They were going to give me, that's why I had plaits for like so long because they thought I was just too old. That's pretty funny. Were there other people in the in the callback? Like, as in other people going for the role, or were you the only person there? I was the only person there at the time. I know that there was, like, two others, though. Right, right. That, well, that's but I remember better. going to the initial audition, and they were all so young. Right. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and that was literally, they were like, do you have any photos of you younger? Can we give you bangs? Can we give you braids? I was like, give me braids, whatever. 
that'll make me young. And I'm not kidding you. I still, I'm 21 now and I still get comments about how I look too young and how Ned's too old for me. Oh, yeah. Still. Yeah. Which is. That has never stopped. No. That's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Well, because people have that first impression of you and they think, oh, you're a little girl. And then they want you to stay that way. So then it. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Uh, well, to be fair, though, in terms of looking young, I think you're, it's, it's an advantage to, to still be able to play young because I was playing 15 on the family law while shooting neighbours as 30-ish. Oh, yeah. So that range is very powerful for you. So hold on very to that young powerful. thing. Don't fight against it. Don't try to seem older or whatever because as an actor, you now have, not only have the experience of the acting you've done, but also the life experience that you can then bring to, say, a role that is for a 15 year old or something. And you'll be up against 15 year olds who just don't have that same life experience yeah. or acting experience. Yeah. So, so don't worry about looking young. It's a really, really but advantageous if you, thing. If you were 15 on family law, did you have to shave for neighbors? Yeah. So and then my hair is a whole thing when I started neighbors, right? So I had, they said, can you grow your hair, grow your hair? Cause I think they wanted me to match Tim more. And so I grew it out and thinking that, and it was the second time I'd let myself stupidly think this, that I'll get there and then I'll cut it into some stylish thing. Cause God, surely that's what that was. No, and I get never. there and it was just, they just slightly cleaned it up and I was like, oh, okay. So we're going for, it. I guess David's a bit nerdy and stuff. So yeah, cool guys, let's do that. Um, and then <laughs> because I had already shot season one of Family Law, season two is coming uh, maybe five months or something after I started on Neighbours, started shooting and um the producers from Family Law contacted our producers on Neighbours and worked it out. But basically I had to have my, but Family Law wanted my hair short and obviously me to be able to shave. So then my hair kind of each week yes. got shorter and shorter. And look, I think if you took all the scenes and then like fast forward them, it just looked like my hair goes into my head. Uh, and then I, I made the beard just like, I guess the month or two before I had to shoot, go to shoot Family Law, shaved it just closer. So that when I shaved for Family Law, then it would grow a little bit so that when I'm back on neighbors, it still wouldn't, it wouldn't be like baby faced and whatever. So, um, you know, it sounds like such a trivial thing to anyone that's probably listening, but it is a serious stress and problem. There's so much thought that has to go into that tiny, tiny thing. But yeah, for me to be on a family law, it was, it was shaving really, really close and that kind of thing. And it's just an, people, cause people ask, you know, what's it like, how do you play someone younger? It's just an energy thing in my head, you know? People. No, definitely. So, um, but anyway, moving on from me and that. Um, <laughs> how long between audition and being on set for you? <laughs> a month. A month. And what was it? That, is that normal? I don't even yeah, know. It, well, it varies, but for regular cast, it can be a month or even more sometimes. But usually it's not less than a month for a regular cast. For guesties, it can be like you're on next week or you're on in two days kind of thing sometimes. Um, I, got the audi- I got the I got the yes on December 18th, 2016, I'm pretty sure. And I got to set January 14th, 2017. Look at, that is a memory. Well, that's, that's numbers too. So I don't know what you're talking about with that mass thing because if you remember numbers. <laughs> like um, what was the call like? Well, I hadn't heard for them from them in in so long. I just assumed not so long, but in my mind, so long. So I just assumed, I just didn't have it. And then I was celebrating a girlfriend of mine's 18th, and I got a call from my agent saying, "You're still in the running. Don't worry, you're still in the running." And I was like, "What? I cannot believe I'm still in the running." And then a couple of days later, my agent called me and she said, Shush, "You got it." And I was like. You're kidding. It wasn't even like a state of a pure excitement. It was just like, no. <laughs> it wasn't real until I got to set, to be honest. Yeah. Did did your mum know about this audition? Uh, yes, she knew about this one because I had finished. Right. So you, you had let out yeah. that you'd had. Did she? And she was like, when I told her, she was like, I knew you could do it. And I was like. <laughs> Well, then why did you make me wait? Lady, I was like, she was like, aren't you glad I made you wait? And I was like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> um, did you, when did you tell her that the, um, 
you had had an agent since year 10. Oh, I just didn't even... She doesn't know how it all works. Oh, right, right, right. So, so she might have just found out now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like now she just found out while she's watching. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then what, first day on set, what, how did you feel? Oh, I was pretty... I was so shy. I was honestly so shy. I don't even know if you remember, but I didn't talk for like three years. <laughs> Yeah, like well, you really, don't talk now. So... It's just slightly different. It's more like, ugh. <laughs> suppose oh, what? Ugh. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> no, the first day I was so shy. We went into the meeting boardroom and I met, and we got like the brief of how you read all the schedules, and my mind just went like. <laughs> and then you know who came up to me? Travis Burns came up to me, bless him, and was like, "All right, this is a list of what you need to do. You need to <laughs> do all that." And I was like. Oh, he was like, go get an accountant and da 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 da. And he wrote all the lists of my tax returns. And I was like, okay, okay. Um, Travis was really nice. No, that's I that's really the great. That, that's really yeah. great because that is a massive thing for anyone who does go through this, that no one's there telling you the nitty gritty no. stuff like about tax and all that kind of stuff. So it was, I had the weird, I'm holding a dog toy. <laughs> um, I had the weirdest experience. I was telling Gemma what to do, and I was like, "Hold up, hold the hold the horses! Oh, right. Like this is probably not that. I think you need to ask someone more experienced than me. This is not allowed." <laughs> um, but yeah, the first day, I remember I met everyone in the green room. Everyone sat in the green room at this point. Yeah. How weird is that? I everyone sat in the green room, um, so it was very crowded. It was like twenty-seven people in one room. Very loud. And I remember I just sit in my corner, and they're like, "This is your desk, and this is your pigeonhole." And I was like, "I get a pigeonhole." Um, Do I get pigeons too? You know, I was like, "There's a, there's like a communal fridge, and there's tea, and it just blew my mind away." And it took, and Lily took me around set, mm. and I remember thinking, "This is the coolest thing in the whole world." Because our sets are pretty cool. You have the huge doors, and you have everything, and it felt so big it felt so big which is so bizarre because now i'm like no my way around so easily and it's not that big it's big how but it just felt huge. how long do you reckon you thought your of yourself as the new kid because it took me like years to not feel like one of the yeah. new kids well i still feel like a bit of a new kid to be honest <laughs> like in my, our ids um matt and paul still call me like little chick, chicken and stuff <laughs> I'm, I'm not even the youngest anymore. Like, I'm still little chicken. Oh, that's so nice. So I still feel kind of new, to be honest. Like, I still feel. I'd say this year I started to stop feeling very new. Yeah, it's it's because time just disappears. So it just and you go, wait a second. Now oh. and then people. For me, it was when people who I started on the show with who I who didn't leave within that, maybe that first year, but then who I felt like, oh, no, we're both in this together. And then they started to leave. I was like, oh, whoa. oh. wait, I'm now I'm like, I've been on the show a while, yeah. now, haven't I? Because we, they were, they started just before me and now they're, what? Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you have been on the show a while because I came six months after you and I feel like I'm, I'm like, whoa, where the hell's the time gone? Yeah. Yeah, and even for me, because like, because the time disappears. That like, you were only six months after me, but then it feels yeah. like that it was like a year or more, but then it wasn't. Yeah. And then yeah, it trips me out. Trips me it, out. And also, I think because you're doing something different every day, you don't even know. I don't. It's just so. I remember when Zoe. I'm so. I got scared. I was like, did I just let out a spoiler? Um, <laughs> I remember when Zoe left my. My heart is <laughs> and I remember being like, "That was a while ago." Whoa, okay. I have been here a while. Yeah, it's, it's true. Even when Mav left, I was like, "Okay, this is weird. Like, this is really weird." Yeah, and it's and it's one of the things you discover with acting, like, because you become really close with your castmates and, and crew as well, um, but especially the castmates because you have to be so intimate with each other. And you'll go from production to production and it's sort of like you're super intimate and then and you're still friendly and stuff once you're after, but it just it, the relationships change in a weird way. Um, well, I wasn't I wasn't friends with Ben. Well, when I say I wasn't friends, we were friendly, but I didn't know him. I didn't, wasn't, did not know Ben for the first two years I was on Neighbours, <laughs> which is 
crazy. Like that just blows my mind away because we're like so close now and I'm like, how did I, where were you and where was I? Even like so many people like that though. What was your first scene? Do you remember? Yes, I hate, uh, the start of Nashby, I hated mm. because I had to be this, because first of all, I didn't, I didn't know Ben at all. And so I had to like, be this awkward, because we started off me having this huge crush on That's right. Ed and he didn't like me back. And it was just this such a, I felt the emotions because it was so awkward. The stuff that I had to do, it was just so embarrassing. And also we didn't know each other. So it was this like... It was like doubled down on it. Oh, it was so cringe for me. Like I had to do this footy stuff where I just like touched him awkwardly. Because Yashmi was supposed to be like so inex- like experienced with boys. So she'd like just remember me hug him or something like that. And I, I think just, I remember that. I just couldn't deal with it. Like, I just couldn't physically deal. I was like, oh, my God, I feel so awkward. I feel so uncomfortable. And then Ben's, because Ben's very professional, Ben wanted to wanted it to be even more awkward. So it would be more awkward. It was just the worst. I hated it. I really hated it. It was so bad. Well, it works for, the, works for you as an actor, though, well, at the moment. It works for the yeah. scene. It works for the story. That was the point, I guess. But then, yeah, it was just like... Ooh, it made my skin crawl a little bit. What about your first scene as Yashvi in general? My first footage Yashvi one was my first. Um, I remember we did a scene under Lassiter's complex and it was all of us, the whole the whole gang. Mm. And I was like rolling my eyes. Everyone had a complaint about me rolling my freaking eyes. Um and I was rolling my eyes because I was an intolerant teenager. Um, and actually, funny story about that, that T-shirt, I have the T-shirt here that I wore on the first day of set as Yashvi. You stole it. Because, <laughs> no, because Nick, who plays Shane, my dad, had everyone sign it for me. For my first birthday. Oh, that's really nice. That's really nice. Yeah, that was probably one of the gifts ever. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, that, 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 those sorts of gifts are really, really special. Yeah, um, very special. And what's what's been your favorite? Is, is the Nashville Nashvi stuff been your favorite stuff? I love the Nashvi stuff. Like I love it. It's so much fun because me and ben, ben get along so well, and um, I always loved with neighbors when I used to watch it when I was a kid. I just loved the love stuff. Like that's the most exciting part of it all. And so that for me is so fun. And I love the breakup stuff. Not in a negative way. Just they're just so much fun to play. Is that does that mean you so, want Na- a Nashby to break up now? <laughs> no, to be honest, it would actually be really weird for me to act with someone else, just because I'm so used to acting with Ben. Like, don't do you do you feel that it's weird? Like, yeah. I remember when one time I had to. Oh, what was it? Oh, I don't know if I can say. I'll oh, shut up. Um, but if there's any other like previous love interests or something like when we were broken up mm. and it's just weird it's so weird because you used to act i acted with ben every single day yeah well me and, and it must be the same with matt yeah, like we generally have the same schedule so when he has a day yeah. off and i don't I'm like oh what the <laughs> like, yeah. how come i got chipped in this schedule what <laughs> you know? there was one time i think because Ben, uh, Ned is part of the Willis family, so he's involved in a lot more events. Uh, yeah. And so he's like, oh, I've got this, I've got this today. And I'm like, that's to be you. I don't. Oh, yeah. Because the audience loves those big event scenes where every, the whole street's in the one house or whatever. But all the actors are like, oh, no. Because they're like, oh, it's going to take forever. Because yeah. it's, unless it's your storyline, you're just standing around in the background, really, and, and not not really doing like, all that much fake dancing to no music (laughs) and drinking really bad non-alcoholic beer that is gross well that's a good thing for david now because he's had the kidney transplant i've said well because of that david doesn't drink anymore because he doesn't want to put the kidney at risk so now i get orange juice and water basically do you know what i did i was like yashvi would drink beer i olivia hate beer and i was like yeah but yashvi would drink beer so now every time props are like Here's your beer, and our non-alcoholic beers taste exactly like beer. They do, yeah. And I'm like, 
oh, why did I do this to myself? Do you know why they make non-alcoholic beer taste like real beer? Because it makes you feel drunk? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know about that, but <laughs> it doesn't make you feel <laughs> drunk. Um, well, it actually probably does trigger something in your memory, but that, that's a separate thing. Because a, a lot of the those non-alcoholic beers are used by alcoholics so that they still get the habit of drinking the beer and it tastes like the beer uh, but they don't actually have the alcohol yeah so the, there's a social benefit it's of bad. non-alcoholic beer so bad. also then your breath smells like beer when you're driving home i always think yeah, if true. you get pulled over and i've had a non-alcoholic beer will that like let's say the breathalyzer is like zero but the policeman's like i smell it yeah like, like we want to take I you to get a blood would... test or whatever you have to do, a pee test or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, what a journey that would be! That would be so annoying. <laughs> have you been pulled over by the police much? Yeah, one time I got pulled over by the police on my way to work, and that was just so awful, like so uncomfortable because I had to call and be like, "Hi, I've been pulled over by the cops because I was in the wrong." <laughs> And then you go into work and like you think they think that something seriously happened. Yeah. yeah. Like, you okay? You okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a catch. <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing because you like it's unlike other workplaces where you might be able to hide it. He, with us it's like, ugh, no, nah, it's you he like down the hall like, Liv, I heard you got pulled over by the cops. Like, <laughs> yeah. like you Everyone know knows. <laughs> yeah. And then you get like uh, the worst is like, Liv, are you sick? Why are you sick? What did you take a day off or something? Because uh, yeah. I can't really do that now because then everyone will think. You know, I know, I know. It's a uh, yeah. I mean, we just can't get sick at the moment. Well, like literally, can't get sick. We can't not. We can't. We have. We can't pretend not to be sick because that's a problem too. I get like scared about coughing now. I'm like, <clears throat> like hold it in, and then I'm like choking on my cough. Yeah, I know. But and super cold. So when you're cold, you. You, you just cough sometimes, you know. I grew up with major yeah. asthma issues, so my body just wants to cough when it gets cold because it doesn't like the cold because I didn't grow up in bloody Melbourne where it's cold. <laughs> where did you cough? Sydney. Yeah. Oh. Which, okay. which isn't actually that much warmer, but it is warmer. Like the, the same temperature in Melbourne no, to Sydney. Right now it's 25 in Sydney, oh. I'm pretty sure. And here, even if it was 22 here, it feels like it's 10. Like it's just icy here. I think we're just a bit, a bit... Bitter. <laughs> we're just a bit weak. I'm definitely weak. Yeah, I'm. Well, I, yeah, but we also just have to be like outside in short sleeves and or a bikini or something, and it's not warm. Yeah. So we feel it because of that. I think. Um, I find though that I like on neighbors that we get to kind of perform different genres in a way. Like, I definitely feel like it. Sometimes you get to do like a sitcom thing and and that kind of stuff. Is there a style or like as as opposed to like you said you like like the romance side of things, but is there the drama, comedy, romance stuff that you prefer to sit in or that you see yourself doing more of maybe? Um, I see myself, I enjoy comedy quite a lot. Um, I think dry humour is something that I really enjoy doing and I think I'm actually okay at it. Um, so I do really like that. I'd like to do some more comedy later down the track. And actually, I do get to do a lot of comedy, I think, in Neighbours more than you, than other characters. Um, I, I do love drama, though. I really love drama. It's my both. Comedy and drama is my number number ones. Although I'm not really into the whole action. Oh, I shouldn't say that. But it's because I'm becoming a cult. <laughs> but um, I'm just not as... I, it's for me on neighbors especially doing two things at once is like out of this world so like action and you know when you have those stunts and stuff i i remember i had to i don't know whoever's watching remember i had to hit susan with a guitar i don't remember this when was that oh that was the most that was so much harder than you would expect it to be and I don't know why, but I feel like I'm a lot less, like, I'm much kinder than I thought I was. And I just couldn't hit it. I just could not do it. And you, I basically, the guitar secrets behind the stunt is the guitar was already broken. Mm. So I just had to hit it and then it would snap. But I still had to hit someone. And I had to hit this little woman who was a stunt double for Susan. Mm. And she was like, just hit me, Liv. Like, just smash me with the guitar. 
And I was like, I, I can't. I, I, it took, it took like, I've never had that many takes in my whole life. On Neighbours, you do like two takes. It took me about 18. Whoa, okay. But, that's like a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. And I just couldn't do it. Not only, but also with that is that once when I was, because I had to go with such mm, force. It would break I on could the already way. feel yeah. it breaking on the way. So I was like, I can feel it. So it wouldn't have worked if it had broken midway. That's one thing to give myself some credit. But I really just couldn't hit her. It was so hard. Well, I think imagining and hitting then, Susan like, Kennedy is always going to be a difficult oh, thing. So awful. And I was trying to say my line, and I was like, oh my God, I'm not built for action. <laughs> oh, you'll get over that. You want to hit people, and then you get the satisfaction of getting to hit people. True. <laughs> I got to hit someone like. Not Susan. Yeah, Kennedy. I think I think the big part of that is it's Susan Kennedy. You meant to be, <laughs> and was it? I hit, what... I hit our stunt double Cougar. Oh yeah, that was easy. That was so easy. I was like, dude, I have videos of it. It's pretty. It's pretty late. Like I really got him, and I have like eight takes, and we just going dush dush, and he's just like going down every time. And then I got to the real day, and I just could not hit this girl. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. It's really interesting. It's an interesting block. I mean, because I could definitely see you hitting Ben, and that would have been an issue. Boosh! I can't wait for the day I get to slap Ben across the face. Yeah. I really just slap that day because I know it's going to happen. I'm just oh, waiting. For sure. It has to. I cannot wait. Um, I watched, you know what I watched today? I watched Why Are You Like This, which I've put in the description below this. So after this, check it out. Uh, yeah, check it out. It's really good. It was really funny, yeah. and I'm because it didn't it didn't get picked up or whatever as a pilot or because I thought it did, but then no, it did, and I was in the middle of filming it, and then it got shut down because of corona. Oh, was that filming? Ah, I see. I thought yeah. in my in my head again the time disappears in names. I thought that was last year that you're meant to be filming it or whatever, so I didn't realize that it it had been moved to. Yeah, so it took forever for. It to start, mm. like it was supposed to be filming, or in my maybe I got my information wrong, but it was always supposed to be filming last year. But then I don't know what happened and ended up starting filming it. I was filming Neighbors, and then so I was doing three three days a week on Neighbors, and then I was doing so I was going Monday to Wednesday Neighbors, and then I was going Thursday to Sunday on Why You Like This. Wow. And yeah, it was intense, but it was so much fun. I really, and then it got shut down. We had two weeks to go. Oh. I know, I know. Don't worry. I feel that I felt that. Pain. How how long? Did you, how many months were you doing that for? A month. A month. I was. It was a short. It was a six week project. So I don't from. Yeah, that's that's for anyone at home. That's hard going doing between the two shows, especially for like I had I've had to do it obviously, but it was only for like a week or two, and not really to that extent to doing that for. And you are, it's you and 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 what's her name? Who's the Naomi? Naomi who's great as well um yeah it's really you two are kind of like the show in a way so that it, it's a that's a lot of work so kudos to you and it was it was so it was so i was so um proud of it and i was so happy with what we were creating it like broke me apart especially because i think i was in such work mode i was in just neighbors way like this like that's that's actually all i did for a month and it doesn't sound very long but whew, it took it out of me and then for it to get cancelled I was like oh, oh. and especially because you were in I was in the zone yeah Do you get what I mean like we were just, I had the ball roll yeah but I am thinking it'll get picked up again with this it's only a two weeks so maybe it'll be a pick up again. I'm not really sure how it all works yeah they'll, they'll but, figure it out like I mean especially I think with what's going on the shows that are part way through production they'll definitely finish them off in my eyes yeah. unless they were things that required the time specifically to be that way or whatever um oh you have the dog toy rat we need to talk you just got a new dog you said oh yeah i just got a new dog oh my gosh maybe i should get her her name's honey yeah and is she is a rascal ask me a question this and i'll like... answer it and you go get honey in the meantime Okay, okay. Um, I, well, <laughs> now you can now put you on the spot for a question. <laughs> um, okay, what is 
Your, what was your favourite scene to film on Evers? Favourite scene to film. Now you go. Cause I, it's, <laughs> uh, my my favourite scene to film on Neighbours. There's a great many, um, but the favourite ones really are David coming out because it touched so many people and I got such great responses from the audience uh, who and people who found courage uh, in David in that moment um, and they used that as a source to come out to their family or friends uh, or people who were, who were the family of friends said that their loved one had used that as a source of, of courage and that's a really special thing as an actor to be a part of. That's something that you want uh, you want to be a part of, like Liv and I were saying before about how we want it, that feeling of affecting people uh, is 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 really what we crave. Um, so that, I'll, I'll leave it as that. That's my favorite scene. And she's back. So let me switch to the other few, and we get to see the puppy. Oh my so, god! So this is honey, and she looks really big. She's actually not that big, but she is a standard poodle. So she's going to get Massive. pretty big. Oh, oh, she's. She's really light, but I, I'm sitting on the ground, so I can't really see her. Aww. She's really tired right now. Oh, honey. Um, so she's being good. She's being good. But, oh, my gosh, she's a bad dog. <laughs> Aren't you? Um, I have another dog called Jasper who is a miniature poodle. And I remember when we got him, he was such a non-dog. Like, he was so human. <laughs> So we didn't we didn't even really train him. What does that even mean? He was so and I'm not human. even I'm not even being so I'm, I know it sounds so like shut up Liv, but really we taught him how to sit and how to go to and to body trained him. And then otherwise we just didn't he didn't he doesn't he eats his food when he wants. Mm-hmm. Like and when I say he doesn't eat, like he'll just leave his food out and he'll eat it when he wants. He doesn't take your food. He like he just doesn't do anything. He doesn't run away. He, I didn't teach him to be off the leash and he just walks behind me when he's off the leash. It's bizarre. This dog, I'm not used to having a dog. <laughs> and this one, like, eats everything, buries everything, like, yaps and – not yaps, I shouldn't say – she's biting me right now. Um, see, look. <laughs> and, like, she's normal. She's not naughty. She's just a dog and I'm not used to it. Yeah. But – and, like – she annoys my other dog so much, but she's so cute. Yeah. And Santa Poodles, they get big. Uh. I know. And my dog Jasper's, like, showing her his boss at the moment, and I'm like, mate, that's not going to last you know, No, long. you know, it will probably, probably stick. It will probably stick. I kind of feel bad for her because my dog just hates her. But I like her. Yeah. She's so cute. I mean, oh. to be honest. It was. I didn't expect to go back to work so quickly when we got her. But now that work the whole time, but I can't bloody train her. But oh. my mum's still working. Ow! She actually like. Oh! I don't want to be mean to her though. I find it really difficult. Yeah, I have. To. Yeah, it's reward-based training, right? So. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> um. All right. Let. I'm. Go, let's go through the chat thing and well i will oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have to i will my phone? Uh, no no okay. no that's right I, I'll, I can just read the questions to you and it's like a speed fire around so you can answer them as quickly as you like if you can go into oh, extended okay. answers if you want to um and i've got to try and find questions that i haven't already asked just in the natural way of our conversation um if you could be any, this is a this is a, a standard neighbors question uh if you could be anyone <laughs> i just love seeing your face Sorry. go Ah. Sorry. <laughs> um, if you could be anyone, be anyone, anyone else, uh, on Neighbours, who would you be and why? New or old? Um, I don't know any old characters. I'm really sorry about that. I'm terrible. Um, if I could be anyone, it would be Roxy because she gets really good storylines. She has really fun. Except we don't want to wear what she has to wear. Oh, so, and she's but... outside with with me. Wearing that stuff, so yeah. I feel, yeah, yeah. But she gets to, she gets to have fun. Yeah. Not that I don't. I'm just saying. Yeah, she's really, she's got a really fun character. Um, yeah. Which is hard to pull off too. That's like very yeah. hard. Yeah. Um. Who? who oh, don't want to ask that question. <laughs> what would you? What? What? <laughs> what do you want to do in the future with your roles? Like, what? What sort of stuff do you want to do? With neighbors? Oh, no, with, with with as you as an actor. Beyond Neighbours. He's an actor. I would like to do um, film and I would like to do films that 
really reflect. Like I love um, historic films. Oh, yeah, it's a period stuff. Like, um, yeah, and um, I would also like to do uh, films that reflect real, um, real life problems. I've always wanted to do a film that kind of shows the intricacies of domestic violence and stuff like that. So yeah, I'd like to do something like that. Okay, that's cool. Um, would you step behind the car- camera? In any way, writing or directing? Or... Yes, I would love to write. I'd love to write. I don't know what I'd write about because I have no idea. I don't have enough experience in my life to write about anything yet. But I will. And uh, I'd love to direct. I think I'd, I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah. What would draw you to directing? What would you like about it? What part of it? Um, I like – there's a director on the show on maybe is Kate Kettle, and I just find it – I like watching her direct. I like the way she – um, makes actors go a bit deeper, and I would like to do that. Yeah, who's now producing on the show, um, mm. and yeah, who I would love to have on this, but she is a super busy lady right now. Um, so I think I'll wait till <laughs> things calm down a little bit before I throw that question out. Um, this is a funny question. Thank you, Walrus. Uh, you're always here. Uh, if you had to choose one onset cast member to be chased into Lasseter's Lake, who would you choose and why? I would choose to be chased by Ben Turlin because then I could fight him afterwards and it'd be fun. <laughs> I could torture him about it afterwards and never let him let it go. Yeah. Um, what else we got here? Um, thank you for people putting question marks at the end of the sentences that are questions because uh, that makes it easy for me to find them. Um, is Nashby the favorite, your favourite storyline to be been a part of? Yes. Uh, people asking about post quarantine neighbors um can somebody make me a fun not a fun can someone make me a good nashville fan video so i can post it <laughs> you can do that for me too because i love having yeah content to post. i love the fan videos they're the best they actually are really great um do you think yashvi can handle it and make it as a police officer yes she can i think unless she's got to hear susan kennedy or something her. yeah unless oh yes <laughs> gosh Olivia, Olivia can't handle it. Yashvi can handle it. This is a good question. Uh, when Yashvi did that epic takedown of the racist girl, did you have any input in the dialogue? And did you get positive, um, a lot of positive feedback from that scene? That was probably the one storyline I'd say that was really, um, that actually I did personally that reflected our society so i really really liked that one that was one of my favorite storylines and shannon who played the racist girl is was so incredible to work with i didn't actually get a say much in the writing it was really well written i didn't actually have to put my two cents into it and um i spoke a lot about it to sharon who plays stippy um because obviously she's you know more experienced than i am and um she was quite emotional about the the, the storyline in a, in a positive way. She thought it was really well done. So, no, I didn't, but I had a lot of fun doing it and it, it was really important to me. Do you get the giggles much on set? Depends who I'm working with. Who makes you giggle? I get the giggles, I get the giggles a lot with Jem and Donovan and Ben Hall. Ben Hall because I'm with him all the time, so, like, we kind of get a bit delirious. So that's why I get the giggles with Ben Hall, not because he's funny. <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, Gemma, because because I met Gemma before we had ever done a scene together. If you're an actor, don't ever do that. I feel like that's the worst thing to do. I went drinking with her. I mean, actually, do it. You should do it. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> but I went drinking with her, and we kind of developed this really like fun friendship before we had ever filmed a scene together. So filming a scene together that was serious was just felt so ridiculous. We were just like. Oh, I just couldn't stop laughing. It was the, probably the worst acting I've ever done. In my life. <laughs> it probably is the best because everyone's watching. Going, what is going on? There's something so interesting happening in each of those characters' minds because they don't know it's a it's, giggle, right? <laughs> you, know? you know what, though? Okay, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think it was either during the gun storyline of when there was fake FPD guns, or it's the current storyline. There's a scene, and I'm pretty sure there's only one scene ever where there's Ben Hall, Zimmer Anderson. Gemma and me, and I cannot stop laughing. And 
because it was probably the funniest scene I've ever filmed. And I could not stop laughing. And I'm supposed to be so serious in the scene. If anyone can find that scene, you will see me smiling. And I'm supposed to be dead serious. So, you know, look after that one. Look, after, look out for that one. Uh, I think the second part of that question was, well, obviously, you just don't. But is there anything you do to try to stop yourself? Oh, my God. I have to, I have to like, really, like, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. It's hard on neighbors, though, because you actually don't really get a second to do uh, that. Yeah. At all. And so you can see that in that scene. Oh, my gosh. I actually have a film clip of it. Anyone wants to see it. I think you should post that and uh, <laughs> I think I should it's not like that obvious, but if you after having this conversation you can see yeah. it. Um do you have a favorite movie or T V show or to think about differently, something that's like a comfort thing that you would go to when you're sick or whatever to, you know, watch or whatever. Um when I'm okay, I don't have a favorite, but yeah, when I'm sick or whatever, I always watch Vampire Diaries and I always watch Gossip Girl really cringeworthy but I have to and movie I always have a different movie right now my favorite movie is Suddenly 30 oh my gosh that's the best mm, Amy loves that too I'm pretty sure it's such a good mood <laughs> well so, and that's there's the that, there's the affecting bit of the performance right you know if you can make people yeah. feel good then that's pretty awesome exactly oh my gosh watch it that's where I think like cause yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of actors out there who gets I think caught up in the tortured actor thing and needing to do serious work that really has has a strong message and stuff which is which is really valuable but there's the same amount of value you can find in things that are pure entertainment as well because oh, you transport people definitely. to somewhere that makes them happy and that's just as valuable as making them think as well i think yeah if you can do both at the same time and suddenly though. 30 really does that so everyone should go watch suddenly 30 tonight um <laughs> You can suddenly thirty whoever made that can pay me now, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, who would win in a fight between Yashvi and Roxy? That's actually a good question. Right. Yashvi's um, Yashvi would win because Roxy can get really sensitive. If anyone's seen that, she can get sensitive. Yeah, you, you, Roxy feels from the heart. Like, think about when she... Did anyone see me yell at her when she kissed Shane? But I thought they were thinking... I, I was thinking a physical fight, but you're talking about, like, a yelling fight. No, I'm talking about a physical oh, fight, but I feel like... Oh, okay, a yelling fight, I think Yashvi would yeah. win. Physical fight. Oh, no, but Yashvi's police mode. Yeah, yeah. Pre, okay, pre, no, pre-police? Yashvi, Yashvi, okay, always is. Pre-police, Roxy would have won. Yeah. Pre-police. Because I feel like Yashvi had a little bit... I mean, Roxy had a little bit more of a rougher growing up, so you know, yeah. she might have been in a tussle or two. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, th- this isn't a question because I've already I answered it, but what's it like working with the hottie Ben Hall? I just want to call him a hottie. On this. <laughs> awesome, but he's not a hot. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of a lot of asking who you would be. Um, that's their questions we can't really answer. Um, how how long are you? Are you... Yeah, you're okay this because i would just accidentally say everything <laughs> how long do you spend in the makeup chair are you are you do you, are you want do you require a lot of time or not uh i've got naturally curly hair so i spend an hour and a half in the makeup chair the straightening <laughs> just because my yeah <laughs> i don't pity or envy you for that um at all because that means you're getting to set much earlier than i have to i would have got there so i would get there at the same time as boys i reckon if i didn't have my hair oh really it's just it's just hair Hair takes a long it's just time. Hair. Um, what else we got here? We have. Is there an actor you would like to play Yashvi's brother Jay? Oh, good question. I deal with that, that's anyway. a really. I don't know because I know that they were oh, okay. Um. Oh, I deal with anyone. Oh, okay. Oh, that's so hard. I don't know. Now that's you can just be whoever you like... want to work with in the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> um, you'd have to look like me. To be honest, you know what's so bad? I actually don't even know many actors. That's even worse. I'm trying to think of someone famous that's like. Well, that's the thing that's changing. What about that right? guy? More people are getting famous who look like us, and that's cool. Uh, what about that guy from Lion? What's his name? Dev Patel. Yeah, that would be. Let's go actually, with... that would you guys? You guys would match. You guys would. Yeah, match. it would work. That it would really work. work. He's legend. My friend worked with him on. Um, was it online? I think it was online. 
I can't remember, but um, apparently he's a legend, absolute legend. He was, he was. Isn't he Australian? Deb Patel knows English. My friend's Australian, uh, Arkadas, who will come on this show eventually at one point. Shout out. Is it what? Shout out. Shout out. No, he's he's really not watching this. <laughs> Um, what else we got here? I, I had one and now I've lost it. Um, someone's wondering how Auntie Trish would react. I don't know who Auntie Trish is. <laughs> I think that's a personal reference. They're talking to somebody. <laughs> but I'm glad that you guys are chatting to each other in here and learning who, learning about your aunties and stuff. Yeah, I love that. Um, all right. Usually, because like, it's quite a people. Are... I saw one on Instagram. Oh yeah. That was like. I got a message from Zuma and she said, Olivia Junkie out killing it on Tac Talks. <laughs> yes, she is. Uh, what was it like filming this, the coffee shop siege? Oh, that was actually really intense because there was actually a real gun on set. Yeah. Um, that was the first time I've ever filmed with a real gun on set. And I got to film with um, people that I don't really ever work with, which was April and Jody, and that was awesome. And the guy was actually, he didn't really... Um, on all the rehearsals, we only had like two, but he didn't really use his full um, voice and stuff like that. Like he, what he was going to do, he didn't really do it on the rehearsal. So then that was um, real fear that you saw in that. <laughs> it was effective, clearly. Yeah. Um, Trish is, Auntie, Auntie Trish is Mackenzie's aunt in Neighbours. Oh, what was the question about Auntie Trish? Oh, let me find it again. Um I actually never met Auntie Trish. Who? Does it, tell us who played Auntie Trish as well. Um, I don't actually even know that. We were on about where Jay would sleep now Mackenzie has moved into the Rebecca's. Someone suggested Mackenzie should move in with me. Richie. Hence, how would Auntie Trish Oh, yeah, Trish that would, would probably react. happen. Thank you, the walrus, for explaining that. That makes it much clearer. Um, how was working with Scarlett? My auntie or the little girl? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, auntie, awesome, and little girl, awesome. Scarlet, um, little Scarlet, is um, very, like, at, like she just loves to, you know, move around and stuff. And I actually work with her heaps. She's really cute, and she, I think she loves me. Yeah, she's super cute. And John, the only name, John, little John, as in who plays Tony's son, Hugo, the only name he can say in the entire cast is Yashvi. And if that's not impressive, because Yashvi's probably the hardest name to say. Yeah. That is that is really impressive. Um, to impress the little kids on set. Um, all right, do you, do, you have, do you have anything you wanted to bring up? No, but Nashvi Neighbours Obsess asked me, what's your favourite Nashvi scene? Mm -hmm. And my answer is... My favourite Nashvi scene was when we did the paint throwing. Uh, the, when the, did... the mural. So, yeah, that was fun. That would have been fun. That, that storyline was really fun. I love when I get to do I feel like when you're in a couple and you get back together, you get to do all those fun things. Like, because... It's, it's also nice to do to scenes watch. where it's kind of a one-take thing. Like when you... Once you throw yeah. the paint, you've thrown the paint. So, like, it, there's an added excitement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although when uh, uh, Sheila got the poop all over her, um, they had to oh, do that twice. That is... Yeah. <laughs> I used to hate it when I would jump in the pool and you only – for some reason I'm always jumping in a pool and you would have to just get the jump and then I'd have to dry and do the jump again. That would suck. Yeah. Especially because your hair and yeah, – air. that's a – Oh, it was the little things in life, let's be real. But it's, uh... <laughs> when we're shooting as fast as we do, that's that's the thing that takes up our times. Um, all right, anything, any any other things you want to answer? Otherwise, we can wrap this up. Um, no, but thank you everyone for watching and listening. Yeah, everyone. Thanks for having me. Everyone has to check out. Uh, why are you like this? Um, yes, check it out, and it will be on your on ABC. When we finish filming, which will be soon. Yeah, which is super exciting because it's, it's really funny. Um, and you play a very different person, Mia, on it uh, very, yeah. very well. But thank you for coming on, Olivia Junkier. I hope you had a good time. Um, I certainly have. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Um, thank you very much. Thanks. Bye, guys. 
And thank you at home for joining me for this Tech Talks and Olivia. Um, she is super. Uh, next week, I do have a guest lined up, but they are in LA, which makes the timing much more difficult, which means I've got to try and film it in my AM, my morning, uh, to try and make it work for them as well as maybe you in the UK. Um, maybe not um but you'll be able to watch it later on um but i won't announce that yet just in case i can't do it next week because i think we would have got our schedules literally tonight uh maybe hopefully and then i can figure it out um but if we can i think you'll really like it so make sure you follow me on instagram so that you find that out or i think i'll put it up on this thing too as like the next guest but i don't know whether you get notified about that or not i don't know how it works uh but anyway thank you for joining me uh make sure you hit the subscribe button if you've liked this or like it um and share it with your friends uh or anyone who you think might be interested um and that would be awesome i'd love you to do that okay bye